Hey guys, it's Chilly here. I got another super quick update for you on the Chill framework. I did the stuff that I was talking about in the other video. I got the release stuff working all fine. It wasn't too difficult at all. There were a few problems. You know, I was, I had the texture. It was copied into the debug output folder. I needed to put that into the release output folder as well. You know, I need to set the debug working directory in release configuration. It wasn't set for whatever reason. And there was one, there was one runtime error that had me scratching my head for a second, but it was a pretty quick fix. So here you see when I'm creating uh, my root signature, I am adding descriptor table here, and you got to give it a pointer to a descriptor range. And I figured this function was just taking the pointer and then copying in the structure, but no, it just it holds the pointer and uses that when you actually, you know serialize the root signature so that means that you can't leave it dangling i had used you know braces in here so that it would get clean up stuff after it wasn't being used anymore but uh, surprise surprise it was being used this is actually this is an annoying thing with like apis like this you don't know when when something takes in a pointer you don't know whether it's retaining the pointer to that thing or whether it's just using the pointer to copy bytes uh, so it's not super clear, you know, this is probably, I don't know, I don't know how Rust works, but I, I imagine that this is what the borrow checking system, that's part of what it was designed to make better. So this is one region where I think, you know, C++, if they could steal some stuff from Rust, I'd be happy. But anyways, that's, that's neither here nor there. We fixed the problem. It's great. It builds. It runs. I also, you know, I turned off... So when I'm in debug, or when I'm in release configuration, I'm not turning on the debug layer in the API, and I'm not turning on the uh, the debug for the shaders, the GPU side debugging, which turned out to be have a huge performance impact, which is what I expected. So when I get all this release stuff handled, what does it look like? So here I have launched six windows. Each one is rendering 2,000 copies of this fairly large sprite. So we're pushing a lot of sprites. We're probably, because I'm running this at right now 144 frames per second on my monitor. So I think we're, we're probably pushing a little under 2 million sprites per second. That's a lot. That's quite a bit. I mean, we got a huge amount of overdraw here. This is more they're going to need for, you know, most typical 2D games. Now, if we look at Task Manager, which isn't the best performance measuring tool, but it's better than nothing, uh, we see that oh, we're using a fairly decent chunk of my GPU, like 20, 21% of it. And, you know, we're using some CPU as well. It's funny, when I have OBS turned off, this actually, for whatever reason, goes down to, like, averaging around 1% of CPU. But when OBS is on, it's like around 2. Point, you know, 2.5-ish, I guess, on average. Uh, but we're not using a ton of CPU, and this is all spread out across multiple, you know, cores, by the way. It's not like in a, a lot of typical game systems where all the rendering runs on a single core. And so when you look at, like, 2.8, that's actually more like, you know, like maybe 20 or 30% of your total capacity because you have to run it all on a single thread, right? But no, we, we spread it out across a bunch of threads. So we're actually, you know, realistically only using about 1 50th of our capacity for CPU here. There's no bottleneck here. The GPU is looking like it's, it's, it's running fine. It could do, you know, many, a few times this no problem. We don't drop any frame rate or anything. But it's still using a fair bit of GPU, so it's definitely, if we got a bottleneck, it's definitely going to be on the GPU side before we ever worry about the CPU. And you know, that tells it tells me some stuff that's going to guide me going forward, because I was wondering, you know, I'm doing a lot of virtualization the interfaces here because I want to make it all customizable so that you can inherit from any component, inject your version into the system, and have everything run with your customized behavior. So I want lots of customization points. That means lots of virtualization, and I've already done quite a bit of virtualization here. You can see all my interfaces that I'm inheriting from and stuff like that. And you know, you wander in the back of your head. I'm, I'm sure it's gonna be fine, because I, I know how these things work. But at, at the same time, there's like a little part of the back of my mind. It's like, ah, these virtual functions, Chili, they're gonna mess you up. They're gonna slow you down, and I'm like, 
I'm, I'm barely using any CPU and I don't got OBS running that goes down to like 1% of my CPU and I'm, I'm not even running a top of the line part here. So I feel comfortable in, you know, making my thing as flexible as possible. I don't have to worry about, oh, it's going to make everything slow. The CPU is not limited here as, as well. And I'm also, I don't have to worry so much about trying to do everything on the GPU. Like I'm trying, trying to generate command lists on the GPU or doing more transformations in the vertex shader, instancing primitive expansion. I have, so far, I am looking very good to just set up my vertices and everything on the CPU and upload them every frame and that's that's no problem the CPU is just sitting around with its thumb up its butt most of the time just twiddling its thumbs so we don't need to try to push more work onto the GPU that's going to be counterproductive at this point now on the other hand I'm looking at it and I'm like 20 percent like that's a lot like I'm pushing a lot of sprites don't get me wrong here I uh, there's a lot of raw pixels going out here between all these different swap chains. Uh, but still, you know, I'm thinking 20% for doing sprite drawing. I don't know. Is that is that a lot? Is that not a lot? I, I'm not quite sure. It could be. Uh, but, I mean, if I look at things here, like, let me close these windows first of all. Get out of here. Uh, like, wh what is there to optimize? The, the pixel shaders, the, the dirt's simple at this point. You know, I'm going to have options for you to, you know, do more effects when you're drawing the sprites but at this current time it doesn't get any simpler than this for shaders and you know in my sprite patch here i do it all i draw all the sprites in a single command list you know there's one command list there is one draw call it's right here so like i'm, I'm not gonna get any more gains by trying to batch things up i'm, I'm batching them up as much as possible basically I don't know if you can hear that, but uh, someone, someone's saying enough fireworks outside. Anyways, I'll probably check that out later if it's still going. But uh, no, we're not wasting time on the GPU doing you know, lots of small potato draw calls. It's all batched up into one big dump. And I don't think texture read is, the, uh, is a problem in this scenario because we're only reading from one frame of a single texture. That is going to be cached. It's going to be super efficient. So I think... Probably our bottleneck is in the fill rate. And you know, these sprites that I position them in this test scenario here, they're all in basically in the viewport, like 90% at least. And so I don't think we're going to gain, you know, any gains in this scenario by culling sprites. Uh, but there is one thing that could possibly really help here, and that is using Z buffer, because right now I'm not using any Z buffering. And with this scenario, there's so much overdraw. Z buffer could possibly, I don't know, I'd have to test it out, but it, it could possibly give us some savings because usually you get big savings from Z buffer because you don't have to invoke the pixel shader. But our pixel shader is so trivial that I don't know how much savings there's going to be using the Z buffer, but it could be. There could be quite a bit. I don't know. Certainly there would be more if we're, if we're starting to use a lot of different techniques. Another thing we could look into is like, you know, drawing our sprites with non quad geometry. So, Geometry that better fits the shape of the sprite so that there's less empty pixels, less empty fill rate, uh, fill capacity used. So that, that could be one thing that we could, you know, look into in the future. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, this performance, as we're seeing here, like, this is already more than we need. If we're talking about, like, I'm, we're doing, like, almost, what, like, 2 million of these large sprites per second and that's only using about one fifth of my capacity. So it looks like we could, we could easily push, you know, 10 million per second, maintaining 144 frames per second. And my card isn't like the newest card. It's like it's a it's a 2080. So it's not bad, but uh, it's definitely not the top of the line either. But yeah, that's where we're at right now. I am very satisfied with the way things are going. You know, in terms of performance, I got I still got a ways to go on, you know, figuring out the the architecture of this thing, but that's another that's another story, you know. Now moving forward, next stuff on my plate is to change the uh, the units that we're working with in the sprite batcher. Uh, right now it's just in basically NDC coordinates and texture coordinates, depending on whether it's source or destination. I wanna move that to pixel coordinates, but uh, I'm gonna probably end up making it like configurable what you want to use for your coordinates whether you're going to be using pixel based or whether you want to 
you know, have your own custom world based, whether you want them to be pixel perfect, so they snap to ap actual pixels, or whether you can position things with sub-pixel accuracy. Going to be creating a separate component that encapsulates sprite frames, so it basically lives on a layer above the sprite batcher, and it knows, you know, where the frames of each sprite exist in the different textures that can constitute the sprite atlases, and maybe it also has an idea of, you know, what frames belong to what sequences in the sprite. And then actual instances of the sprite will reference that sprite template, and the instances will contain information about stuff like where the sprite is in the world, and, you know, what what animation sequence it's currently working through, that sort of thing. Going to make it so that you can actually, you know, load multiple sprites into this thing. You'll have, like, the ability to have, like, an array of sprites, and then the shader can index into them dynamically, because you can do that in Shader Model 5 at DirectX 12 now. Very nice and easily. And I'll probably mess around with, you know, like, camera transforms. Add a little camera to that so you can move around. And, you know... Just get some of that stuff out there, and then I'll see. I'll see how I see how I like things. Take a step back, look at the big picture, and kind of figure out from there where I want to go next. But yeah, that's where we're at right now with the chill framework. Uh, thanks for thanks for visiting, checking in, and uh, I will see you again with some more something. Probably another you know update on the chill framework.